Hey guys, it's Dee. I hope you guys are doing well. I have a fun craft project to share with you guys today. I made this a couple of days ago and um, it turned out better than I expected, so I thought that I'll share with you. I made this using a um, SVG, or oh, actually it was a PDF file that I found um, on a website and I will link that down below. So if you guys wanna go check that out or um, you know download it and make it for yourself, it'll be there. And um, it was a lot of fun. Um, so I will, without further ado, I'll show you what it is. It is this vintage mid-century modern style house. So this is the side. And I will turn the camera around and show you guys some close-ups, but I just wanted to show you what it looked like. So like I said, there was a cutting file, which is what an SVG file is. Um, and because I have a Cricut machine, I was able to do that. Um, actually, I think the file is PDF and then I converted it to a PNG file and then I uploaded it onto the Cricut software to be able to cut it. But if you don't have any of those things, it's still possible to cut it. It's, um, you'll just have to print it out on like cardstock or print it out on paper and then trace it onto something um, more firm. I use chipboard that I purchased, um, a really thin chipboard, which is like a cereal box type width, um, so not too thick. And um, and then, so that's how I made the base of it. But so if you don't you know, have chipboard or if you don't, so just kind of find things around the house. Um, you know, you could use cereal boxes or even like cardboard boxes that are not very thick and then you can trace it out cut it with the scissors and then the windows, you can kind of use a craft knife to do all that. So I knew that I don't didn't have the patience to do that. So I had to figure out how to um, get the PDF to, to work with the Cricut. And you know, I just Googled and I figured it out. So um, that part wasn't too hard. And then I kind of um, looked in my craft stash and tried to find some items that I had to to craft with. So I will turn the camera around now and I will show you guys some close-ups so you get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so here is the house. It is, let's see, um, it is, I'm trying to measure it on my paper here. It is about, on this base is about nine inches. And so let's see, so first I cut out the chipboard with um, the Cricut file and all you have to do is, you know, load up the mat and cut it out and then I went ahead and did the, cre uh, the creasing of the paper. So I did that first because I didn't know how it was going to be after I painted it. So I went ahead and did the, did the creases and I think that was a better idea to do that first because um, it was a little hard to crease after I painted. So I went ahead and did the creases and then I painted. And this was the paint that I picked up. And as you can see, it's it's this folk art brand. And I think they may have this at Walmart maybe, but you can see I paid 50 cents at a, a thrift store and it was pretty full. So this is the color that I used. And then for the roof, although you, can't see the color very well, but you can see it on the door here. It was a Martha Stewart metallic paint. So that's the one I use for that. And then I use the Sparkle Flakes. This is what I use to do the snowflakes. And I think I found this also at a craft store. So that's what the packaging looks like. It's called Snow Crystal. So I did that on the top and I just used like a um, regular a regular like craft glue. I think it's like scotch adhesive something that I use, but you can use Elmer's glue. Um, you can use a variety of glue. So I did that and sprinkled that on top and then on the bottom. And then, so that was pretty much um, the house itself. And then I did use a hot glue gun to put it together because um, I wanted it to be sturdy. Um, but I think you can use just regular craft glue. It's just gonna take a while to dry and I kinda want it to speed it up a little bit. So I did use um, a hot glue gun to glue the pieces together. I used some, I think these are just like tiny mirrors. 
and I use that for the like step stones of the house and then the bottle brush trees are from Joann's I believe um so they're made to look vintage but they aren't vintage I do have vintage trees but the height didn't work for this so I you know just ended up using these from Joann's and then that's something that I picked up you know at a estate sale at some point the present something I picked up but these tiny numbers 52 I think I also picked up at an estate sale at some point and um, in Singapore we lived in the house number 52 so that has significance for me and um, so that's why I added that and this icicles up here over the weekend last weekend I was at a Goodwill I don't go to very often and I found um, a set of these icicles and I thought how fitting because I was planning on making a house so um, I got that and added that to the roof and then this is a spun head angel that I've collected um, you know at an estate sale and um, I just propped her up on the top of the tallest tree and then on the very back the house thought, I mean, the cutting file did come with a opening. So you can put a tea light in here and it will, um, you know, not a, a battery app operated tea light, obviously not one with the flame. And um, I did test it out and I was able to get three in there and um, it looked really nice. So I'm gonna try to get some pictures of it after um, it gets a little darker and then maybe I'll add it so that you guys can see that. So I have made a couple of other uh, prototypes um, just on cardstock. I wanted to test it out before um, I cut it out on chipboard and I would highly recommend it if you guys would do that because um, I did cut onto chipboard right away and it did not work out and I you know wasted chipboard blah blah and so um, I'll actually bring out the prototype so that you guys can see. Okay so this is the prototype um, that I did first with just cardstock. Um, this is what it looks like. It was really helpful to do it on here because then you kind of know where to do the creasing and um, you can kind of get a picture of you know how to put it together so I would highly recommend you guys do this first before you get started um, you know cutting on chipboard if that's what you're doing or I think you know working with the cardstock is um, would work well it's just um, I think once you put the paint and if you plan on putting Mod Podge or glitter it might warp a little um, would be the only thing I would think of so just you know keep that in mind um, let's see what else. If you guys have questions about um, how I did some of it, I'm trying to cover everything, but um, just leave me a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it. I did want to film the process for you guys, but I did this over three or four days and it was like after work and it was already dark and while I was working on it and um, the only thing that I really got was the Cricut machine working, which is not very interesting. So. Um, let me show you guys the icicles that I use. So this was the set. Um, as you can see, I paid 99 cents for it. Um, it says made in Taiwan. That's what the front looks like. I think the back is blank. So there were two sets of these. And um, so I still have another set and, you know, the rest of this to use on some other houses. I also want to give you guys a sneak peek of the next one that I'll be making, that I've started making, but this is the prototype. It is a little church with a steeple. Um, how cute is that? So this will be the next one coming up and I've already started working on it, but here is the prototype. Um, and um, it's considerably smaller than, you know, the this other one that I did here. and. You'd think that I would start small and go big, but no. I just have to go big and I just have to do this one. And I just love this. I love the style of the house. And there are a couple more of these um, vintage, mid-century modern, mid-century modern, I mean, um, house houses to do. So I might get around to doing the rest of them, but this is the first file. 
that I did. And then just for size comparison, <laughs> there's that little church there. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned. So the base is just like a gift box that I had. It was a vintage gift box. And um, I just wrapped it in some felt that I had um, laying around some just some craft supply that I picked up at an estate sale and I hot glued it around and um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think anything's on the bottom of this. So it's just a box. You could also use like poster board, um, styrofoam, um, you know, you could stack together a bunch of um, cardstock to kind of make like a thicker base, but you could really use anything, at a ba anything as a base. I was just looking for something that was um that i already had that i didn't have to make so this box was already made so i just um actually this is just the lid of the box so i still have the other piece of the box to use on another um another um what do you call that house so I hope that you enjoyed watching that. Um, please do leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. And um, stay tuned for an upcom upcoming video because I have started on a couple of these houses. So that will be the next video. And um, if you like this video or if you think that somebody would like it, please share it. And I am gonna leave the link down below. So um, I think the website is called retrorenovation.com. And um, so you guys can click through and kind of see her process of how she did it. And I mean, I think I read that article like 10 times before I attempted it because I didn't want to make any mistakes. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.